Twin Stars, a science fiction audio adventure drama starring Greg Nugent as Imperial Officer Albert Tyson and Melissa D. Johnson as the space pirate Zhang Ping'an, two figures caught up in the civil war raging over humanity's last empire of the stars. Also starring... Tegan Harris as Esther. Kathy Rinella as Sophie. With Ty Konzak as Professor Rossum, Natalie Van Sistine as Lieutenant Kilpatrick, River Kenoff as Mark, and Kimlin P. Tran as Henrietta. Tonight's episode, Higher Education. Come in. Yo, Farmer! You got any ice? Sure, Hedda. In the fridge. I hope you will. Thanks, girl. Hey, there's a party out there. You at least going to take a break? Just 15, girl. <laughs> 15 becomes 20, and 20 becomes 40. Sorry, Etta. I've got assignments to grade. Such a waste. You know, the school might not even be here tomorrow, so why are you bothering? Because it might be here tomorrow, and if I don't have these papers graded, Professor Rossum will kill me. Deb, you're ice, girl. If I wasn't so drunk, I'd be crapping in my pants. You know, the Empire isn't going to ignore us. They shut down the other galactic universities. We're the only ones left. Then they shut us down. It won't stop progress, Etta. They can't make us stop thinking or talking. The truth will come out. Till they show up in orbit with a fleet. What are you gonna do then, Ice Girl? Mm. What I did last time. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I forgot. It's okay. <sighs> Sorry I can't join the party. Nope, no, it's okay. I'll just go. You get back to studying. Uh, you, uh, want to talk? I'll be around later to check on you. <laughs> no, you won't. But thanks anyway, liar. <laughs> sure. Later. <sighs> what I did last time. But you were there last time, weren't you? Ping in. Log of Albert Tyson, Imperial Year 27-19, Day 68. Following Sir Fawn's request, Esther and I have traveled under false identities to Hannah's world, home to Forsagen Galactic University. We're here to deliver a message to Dr. Emil Rosam, a former employee of Sir Fawn. I don't know the contents of the message, nor did I ask. Kip and Ensign Helgi have gone to a nearby system to find out information, and will be back to pick us up in two standard days. The pacification fleet is getting more out of control every day, and something must be done. This light rail transport seems oddly empty. Students, all they do is sleep and have fun. Maybe it's just they're too lazy to go to class this morning. Perhaps. I seem to detect an elevated level of stress pheromones in the air and the voices of our fellow passengers seem subdued. I wonder if there is not something happening we're not aware of. They are probably worried their families won't be able to afford to send them here to waste their money any longer. It sounds as though you do not approve of higher education. Oh, I approve of it. Education is the best hope for our society's future, and we need more thinking educated people out there. No question about that. 
What I don't approve of is aimless students who hide in school when they should be out experiencing life. Discipline and life experience are what they need, not more time spent arguing over academic trivia. Education should be for those who are old enough to appreciate it and not squander it in bars and pubs. I think there are many here who might disagree with you. <laughs> I'm sure there are. Well, these schools might be good for something if St. Rail is trying so hard to shut them down. Probably that's what these people are worried about. This whole city's economy is based on the university. Taking care of 300,000 students is a full-time job, and it pays pretty well. Without the university, they've got nothing to live on. I had wondered when we'd be entering the university grounds. We entered them when we reached the city limits. They're the same thing. I've been in a few of these places on recruiting drives, although I've never been to this one before. Impressive. So, do you know where to find Professor Rosson? He's a teacher in the political science department, so that's the district we're heading for. I just hope someone there can help us find them. Oh, and Esther, I'm sorry, but you'll have to wait for me while I deliver this message. As you wish. But may I ask why? We are under assumed identities, and a squire might draw too many questions. Understood. I will pass the time watching inebriated students. I don't think that will be hard to find. Yes, Professor. I've got all the files for Class 2 all marked. No, I marked them all using the rubric you gave me. The, the one you gave me last week? Hey, how's it going? There's another one? Um, no. I didn't check my inbox. I was too busy marking. But I promised to return them today. Yes. Yes, Professor. Yes! Okay, I'll redo them using the new rubric. Goodbye, sir. <sighs> that son of a bitch! Does he know how long it took me to grade those things? I was up all night. And I'm teaching his courses while he sits on his porch drinking Yulian tea. <clears throat> Son of a- uh. Uh. Hello. I'm sorry, ma'am. Your colleague told me to sit here. She... did? He is cute! You are not letting that one get away. You are so dead the next time I see you. Ma'am? If this is a bad time, I apologize, but I needed to deliver a message to Professor Rossum, and they told me you're his teaching assistant. Uh, no, no, it's it's not a bad time. Uh, well, yes it is, but not really. Um, I mean... Hi, I'm Sophie Farmer. Tyrone Campbell. Call me Ty. So, Ty, what do you need to see the professor about? Uh, are you a grad student? No. I work for the Holloway Concern, a company Professor Rossum formerly worked for. His old employer asked me to find him and deliver a message. Oh, well, I can take it for you and pass it along. I'm sorry. It has to be delivered personally. If you could just tell me where to find him? Well, the professor's at his house just outside the city. He only comes in twice a week. That's fine. Just tell me where to find him and I can- No! Pardon? I mean- no. Uh, it's pretty hard to find. Look, why don't you let me take you out there? The professor doesn't like visitors, so if I don't go, he might not see you. Oh. Okay. Well, I wouldn't want to cause you any trouble. No, no, it's, it's okay. It's no trouble at all. But, um, would you mind waiting for a while? 
I have a class to teach in five minutes. You're not in a hurry, are you? Hmm, I guess not. Can I watch your class? I haven't spent much time in the university classroom. Oh, you want to? Sure. Do you know anything about politics? <laughs> Only what I've learned firsthand. And so, following the so-called Manor Farm Doctrine, the colonists of Eva III attempted to set up a paradise which later imploded due to social stresses and a failed political structure. Yet another example of how human evolution has failed to reach the point where we can create ideal living environments for our own species. Yes, Mark. Professor Farmer, isn't it possible that the reason the colony failed was that the colonists simply didn't want what the system offered on a subconscious level? We learned in socio-psychology class that humans as a species need a certain amount of negative stimulus to encourage personal development. So, you're saying they didn't have negative stimulus and chose to create it? Hmm, interesting. But what about the leadership structure? Shouldn't they have been able to see that need and accommodate for it using socio-science development models? Not if they weren't aware of it themselves. Didn't you teach us that much of social leadership is simply crisis management? As the crises developed, maybe they were too busy putting out fires to see what was happening on the larger picture. Okay. But that's only true once the crisis reaches full force. What about during the lead-up time? Why didn't they see it coming then? Well, uh... Because they were blinded by self-interest. Ping. Uh, oh, um, go on. When they set up that colony, they were trying to achieve a dream. A dream of paradise. The problem is that people see what they want to see. So when the problem started, they would have put them off as minor annoyances and not looked at them as symptoms like a doctor would. It wasn't just a colony of scientists. It was a colony of dreamers. So they couldn't see the flaws in their own plan. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Pacifica. It's okay, I'm a new arrival. Well, Pacifica, most of the social movements in history were started by dreamers. But why did they succeed and this one failed? The social movements that succeeded did it because the leaders didn't buy into their own hype. Dreams are something you feed the masses to get them to do what you want. But, if a leader believes their own dreams, then they're doomed. Communism, democracy, theocracy, corporate states. All of them were really run by autocrats and oligarchs who had the power while the people just thought they did. Oh, real politic, is it? Well, that's quite a generalization, and you make it sound like we're still a bunch of tribals on Earth's African savanna. Aren't we? Why do you think the Empire is falling apart right now? Mark there has the right idea. People only grow when they're under stress. Take away the stress, take away their chance to grow. What humans need to develop is more stress, not less. So, you're in favor of smaller government then? Damn straight I am! How can you develop if you've got a minder sitting on your shoulder telling you what you can and can't do? When we learn as kids, we learn by experiencing, not being told what to do and what not to do. If everyone could choose their own way, then we'd see... Anarchy. Some action? We'd see anarchy. Go on, Todd. Thank you, Professor. Pacifica, what you're forgetting is that the government doesn't just represent a big brother telling you what you can and can't do. Government also represents social memory. We learned to make fire once upon a time. And how did that get passed on? Through society. Each generation didn't need to make fire again because the previous generation taught them how. That's where schools came from, to pass along social knowledge. Government is our attempt to learn from the mistakes of the past and avoid repeating them. Just like people grow, governments grow and learn. We develop different forms of government out of the need and desire to improve government from what it was to what it could be. Oh, is that why we're back to monarchy again? Every time another system snuck in to take its place, it eventually all devolved back into monarchy. You're right. 
And maybe monarchy is our natural state as a people. But as Professor Farmer mentioned, maybe monarchy is our default state because we weren't ready for what came next. We can try to think of new forms of government, but our human natures hold us back. Does that mean we shouldn't keep trying? Hell no! We should be trying hard, but we're not doing anything trapped in this giant monolithic political prison. The people need to be free to live and regulate their own lives, not trapped under some system which tells them what to do. We'll have a lot better chance of finding the right way to Utopia if the people have to think about their own futures for once. And who would regulate trade then? Who would fund education? Who would maintain order? Look, I admit the system is not perfect, but the human race has grown more under the empire than they have at any time throughout history. You say people need stress to grow? Well, they also need security. They need to know they don't have pirates coming after them in the night to take everything they worked for. If they did, why would they bother to do anything? Our system gives the people the peace and order they need to develop. It's not a cage. It's a cradle. What you're proposing is anarchy. You might as well just invite the pirates in and be done with it. Then maybe it's time for humanity to get its ass out of the cradle and start walking on its own. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Pacifica, and you too, Ty, for your opinions. I think we've been given a lot to think about. All right, class, remember that your rough drafts for your thesis papers are due in class next Tuesday, and you need to read Chapter 13 for tomorrow. Pacifica, could you come see me, please? Do I pass? Ping! Oh my god, Ping! Sorry about disrupting your class. But can you believe that guy? What a load of... <clears throat> what? Oh, Pacifica, I'd like you to meet Tyrone Campbell. Oh, hey. Call me Ty, and it's nice to meet you. Did you really believe what you said up there, or were you trying to stir the pot? Every word. You? I can't believe that. How could you- Whoa, whoa! Time out! Class is over here, you two! Apologies. Professor, maybe I better wait outside. Okay. I just need to talk to her for a minute. I'll be right there. Nice meeting you, Ty. Please tell me that's not your boyfriend. Well, I didn't have anything long-term planned, if that's what you mean. Oh, Ping Anne, we've got so much catching up to do. How? Why? When? I came to see you. Can we talk? Uh, not right now. I'm taking Ty out to meet my supervisor. He's got to talk to him. It's a long trip, and I'm going to be gone for a couple of hours. Oh, hey! Do you have time? Why don't you come with us? Me? In a car with Ty for a couple hours? Oh, that'll go well. Thanks, I'll pass. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be back before dinner. You want to meet up then? Sounds great. I came here to meet you, but I've also got some research I wanted to do. Link to me when you're ready. Are you coming back to school? Well, you could say I did come here to get an education. Esther? Yes, Tyson? Esther, there's been a change in plans. The professor isn't here in the city. He's at a country residence and his assistant is taking me out to meet him. It looks like I'm going to be gone for a couple hours. Do you wish me to meet you and accompany you? No, that's okay. You stay here and enjoy yourself. It's probably going to be a dull trip anyways. As you wish. I am exploring local data libraries. They are most extensive. Okay then, enjoy yourself. If you find anything interesting, let me know. I'm also sending you the coordinates for the estate in case you need to join me. Oh, here comes Sophie now. <sighs> With her friend. I take it from your tone of voice you do not like her. She's just another student anarchist. I hope she gets some sense when she gets into the real world. I need to go. Enjoy yourself, Esther. You too, Master.
Maintaining orbit behind the planet's second moon. This area has been scanned six times in the last 20 minutes, but there is no sign our cloak is deficient. So they haven't found us. I wonder how Ping An is doing. If she has difficulties, she will contact us using the prearranged frequencies. Yeah, I know, Tomlin. That's not what I'm worried about. Hasn't she been cold since we rescued her on Halcyon? I did not notice a change in her average body temperature, no. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about her feelings. It's like she's got them all tamped down inside and she's not letting anything out. I'm starting to get a little worried. I would not worry, Betsy. The Master's emotional equilibrium is far higher than that of a normal human. I believe she is capable of dealing with even strong emotional crises. I hope so. I just worry that when it comes out, it's gonna be messy. And there's Garnet Falls down there, one of the largest on the planet. Want me to take another pass over it? Hello? Hello? Sorry. Just wandered off for a moment there. Something about your friend Pacifica... She seems very familiar to me for some reason. I know I've heard her voice before. Ah, the destined lovers. No. It's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't quite seem to remember. Well, we'll be at the professor soon. Do you know anything about Dr. Rossum, Ty? Not much, I'm afraid. And he's a pretty private person. I'm not even sure why he teaches, really. And he's been my supervisor for the last two years, my E-PhD. And I still don't feel I really know him well. I know he used to be a viroid engineer specializing in artificial brains, but he retired a long time ago. I guess that's why you want to speak with him, right? My employer does. I'm not sure why, though. Well, get ready for a surprise when we get to his place. He's a bit... weird. He uses custom viroids as a kind of living art, and he poses them around the estate every morning, and they just stand or sit there until he tells them to move. He even dresses them up like a bunch of kids' dolls. When I found out about it, I almost quit. It took me a week before I could get over how creeped out I was. Sounds like a very... interesting hobby. Yeah, but he's the best at what he does, and he's got the connections. In academia, it's all about who your supervisor is. That determines whether you pass, and what kind of positions you'll get for the future. I want to be a professor here, and he's the only one with enough clout to get me the job. <laughs> Sounds like the military. So I stick with them. Freak show and all. Okay, there's the estate compound down there on the right. Let me just bring the air car in and you'll get to meet the man himself. Well, I see what you mean. It's like we're surrounded by an army of dolls. Yeah, it's like a scene out of a horror movie. My brain wants to go hide. <laughs> I'll just ignore them. They're art, after all. Okay, here we go. Front door. Well, they're a big pair, aren't they? Do we have to answer a riddle to get these two to open the doors? Not today, I hope. I'm here to see Professor Rossum. Are you the Earth? Please enter. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. He really takes this a little too far sometimes. I didn't say a word. Good afternoon, Miss Farmer. The professor will see you and your guest in the summer. 
Thank you, Tanya. It's another one of his customs, just a more human looking one. You say he's a professor of political science? Yes. He even uses these biroids to do social experiments with. He just sets them up with different mindsets and lets them run as communities while he wanders around and watches what they do and how they react to the situations. Sometimes when I come here, they're in groups arguing about this or that. I've even come and found them at war with one another. Were they armed? Sometimes. He keeps fake weapons for them to use in simulated war. At least, he says they're fake. Alright, when we go in, follow my lead. We'll see what kind of mood he's in. Understood. After you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a guest. Oh, quite all right, Sophie. Quite all right, yes. Uh, come in, come in, please. Now, I was just talking with the captain here about my latest socio-political experiment with my children. Oh, I see. Nice to meet you. I'm Sophie Farmer. Captain Bertha Kilpatrick, Imperial Fleet Security. And this is Tyrone Cambo. He's here to meet you, Professor. Ah, yes, I've wanted to meet you for a while, Professor. Sophie has told me a lot about you. Yes, I... have? Well, nice to meet you, lad. Yes, please have a seat in the wicker chair over there. Now, now you can join in in our little discussion. What do you think about slavery? Yes, do sit down, Lieutenant Tyson. We have so much to discuss. I am a What a mess. My god! Don't worry, Betsy. They're just bioroids. It looks like there was quite a fight. But aren't squires like Tomlin bioroids? Indeed we are. However, these are common household units. While we have superficial similarities, squires are built to military standards. In the event of a combat situation, these models would have been of minimal effectiveness. They've been hit with blasters. Tomlin, you're sure this is the right place? Indeed. I have accessed the flight itinerary for Miss Farmer's air car, and this was the planned destination. Ping on? Who would do this? Why? I don't know. But we're going to find her. Be alert. There is motion to our left. You! Behind the statue! Come out! Now! Hey, it's another bioroid! Maybe it can tell us what happened here. You, come over here. Wow. This one's pretty. And hopefully full of information. You, where is your master? I do not know. But with your help, I hope to learn. Are you comfortable, Lieutenant Tyson? Where is this? We are in my office, Lieutenant. <laughs> Captain Kilpatrick! You gave us a good fight before, Lieutenant. It cost me three of my people. Only three? I'm sure he hit more than that. The others were better armored. Now, you already know your situation. So why not cooperate with me and simply tell me that which I want? Which is? To begin, I wish to know everything about the incident in the Ares Hammer system, and about your mission here to Hannah's world. We have also found an encrypted file for Professor Rossum in your memory, and we wish you to open it. And if I can give you all that? I am authorized to offer you a commuted prison sentence and a full pardon for your family. Under the Emperor's new regulations, family assets of any officers found committing treason are seized, and the immediate family members placed in work camps. I understand your sister is still recovering from a recent ailment. Life for her in the camps must be... difficult. Difficult. Yes. So you see, there's no reason to hold back. 
The sooner you give me what I ask for, the sooner we can be done with this business and she can be free. Yes, I could interrogate you, but it would be a long and unpleasant process for both of us. Isn't it better that all this has some reward, instead of the alternative? And Sophie and the Professor? The Professor is slated to be sent to a research facility, where they can make good use of his... talents. As for Miss Farmer... Are you aware that she's an associate of the pirate who masterminded the Ares Hammer System incident? We only learned this ourselves recently, of course. What? Yes, I should think you'd want us to hold her. She may very well be the key to retrieving Admiral Veers, and wiping out the pirate menace known as Zhang Ping An. Twin Stars, Book 2, Episode 4, Higher Education. Written and produced by Robin Patterson. Mixed by Brushman. Also starring Nico Ford as Betsy and Nick Petrella as Tomlin. Opening music, Beyond Infinity by Peter Chen. Closing music, Victoria's Day by Maestro Rage. Additional music by Kevin McLeod and found on the Newgrounds.com audio portal. Sound effects from SoundDogs.com, The Free Sound Project, the Sound Ideas Series 6000 Sound Effects Library, and recorded by members of Kung Fu Action Theater. This recording is licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial share-alike license, so pass it around, please! This story and all its characters within are copyright 2009 Robin Patterson, all rights reserved. For more audio adventure, come to KungFuActionTheater.com, where theater is spelled with an R-E at the end, because that's how it's done with style. Zayen, bye-bye.